Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Homesteading Academy. So I'm just going to say hello real quick to everybody in the chat, and then we're going to take it away, and we're going to bring up our special guest tonight, who is Anne from Little Frenchie in Big Texas. So let me just say hello to everybody quick. Um, also, we're doing this tonight because I want to try and mix it up and put some Friday nights in there, so that way... Um, you know, some people want to watch it when it's live. Other people can't because they're working. So we're mixing up time. So, hey, Broke Cowgirl. Hey, Casey at Ormsby Farms. Hey there, Lazy Days Ahead with Jesse and Lisa. Congratulations, by the way, on your big milestone today. Hey, Dusty at Fox Holler Homestead. Hey, Carla, Living a Rogue Life. Hey, Jake Nunya, Texas on the back 20. And we've got a thunderstorm rolling through. So if you see flashing behind me, that's what's going on. Hey, cool gamer. Hey, CB, Hugo Homestead. <laughs> you are a special guest, Jesse. Hey, Green Granny, too, Denise Passell. How are you? Hey, Doug and Carolyn at Appalachian American Homestead. Hey, Krubby the Beagle. So without further ado, I'm going to bring up Anne with Little Frenchie in Big Texas, and she is going to present some information to us tonight. Please hold your questions until the Q&A at the end. Uh, that way she can present all of the information to us. I know there's been a lot of interest in this, so we're really excited. So here is Anne. Hi, Anne. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you for being here with us. No, of course. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. I feel very honored, you know, to uh, come and speak at the uh, Homesteading Academy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, you know, I always think of you when it comes to incubating and hatching eggs because you always have a variety going on. So I thought it would be great for you to talk about it because I'm sure you incubate different breeds of eggs all the time. You are no, no. You're completely right. I mean, we started, and I started about two years ago. I'm so, but I, I do it nonstop. So, <laughs> two years, it's a lot of experience. Uh, started with the chickens, definitely. It was the first. We started with some uh, chicken uh, breeds, uh, the Buff Optington and uh, some Bentams, and then we expanded on the chickens. We got some turkeys, so I started hatching turkeys. That was actually one of my best video. I did a live one evening with the turkeys hatching, and I had a a lot of success on my turkeys and they were just so cute i mean turkeys hatching are adorable and then we got quails so we did quails um which is a bit different here and i did a few ducks but not too many mm -hmm. ducks because they're pretty messy at the farm so if we got too many it's just not manageable yeah, <laughs> yeah. Them in their pan. yes but you yes. Can need to clean them so <laughs> So exactly. yeah, exactly. Quite a few, um, a few things. So maybe I can start by uh, talking about the incubators I use, if you want. Please do. The floor is all yours. Wow. <laughs> so we started here, and I've got the two incubators uh, I use. I started with the, I think one almost everybody has, which is the foam incubator. You know the, which one? How do you you call it the little giant? I think. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that uh, incubator here me. with the, the rails inside. So it's it's an easy one. You find it at Tractor Supply. I think it's $100, the whole thing, when with the rails, because you want uh, the eggs uh, to uh, move, rotate. So this is what I started with. And <laughs> I had a few good hatched and a few um, not too good uh, results. Go ahead. You put it away. Um, very I, yeah, it's just for me, it's not very reliable, that uh, incubator. I had one incident where it almost burned. And I'm glad I was close by because it could have been bad for the house. But it burned the foam and all the eggs inside. But they were just to be trashed. I returned it. It was from Tractor Supply. I returned it. But I had the hatch rate is not always that good. I had one excellent one with quails. So we purchased some quail rails and that incubator actually can hold 120 eggs 
<laughs> for quails. When you put wow. the, the special rails, and we had like a hundred quails. It was running everywhere in the incubator and in the brooder at the end. Hundred <laughs> quails is insane. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. That was a lot. So that one was a good hatch rate, but in general, it's not that high. So I started looking for something else. And I bought, um, at the end, reading all the reviews, I got, okay, put the instruction on the side. I got the Nutrivite 360 uh, here from uh, Harris Farm. It's a bit more expensive. I think now it's running at 150 with the price increased. Uh, and it only holds 22 eggs compared to 40 in the other one. So you've got less eggs, it's more expensive, but the hatch rate here is 85%. It's really, really good. So I really like it. Can you fit more quail eggs? No, I cannot fit that many more quails. I have it here, actually. I have one that I'm I'm not running. And what I really like is that you see what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is cool. Um, I use the rails. These are made for chickens, but my turkey eggs fit in, the ducks as well. And for quails, I put two in each uh, box. So it's uh, about 40, 44 uh, quails that I'm, I have right now going on uh, over there. So I, wow. I like this one and it's automated um, at the top. Um, once you start it, it calculates, you can update uh, the hatch, uh, the days to hatch. It stops turning automatically three days before. So you, you don't have that much to do on that one, which I like. There but, you go. That's what I have for now. I, honestly, I would love to have, uh, once we really get serious about the farm and if we really want to have a business, I would love to have a huge incubator. You know, they've got some that are kind of like big armoires where you can have 300 eggs. Mm -hmm. 300 eggs! Yeah, some of them are really big, but we're not there yet. <laughs> we're not. I don't know. What do you use yourself, Lisa? I have an Incuview. It's the same one that Monica at Bland's Promised Land Ranch has yeah. and that's why I bought it because she had um given some rave reviews about it it was more it was pricier but I'm okay with pricier as long as I have it and it's built to last and it's giving me a better hatch rate and we feel the hatch rate was good on the eggs that we had in there how many eggs does it hold um I think it holds like 20 oh so it's about the same as mine here yeah but but we I think we had put 10 in there and we had eight hatch of our turkeys. That's not bad. Um, yeah. And then we had chickens too, about the same 80% yeah. or, or 70%. And then um, we had a batch of turkey eggs that we knew were older, but we only have one incubator. So we said, oh, we'll try it. Wasn't so yeah. good. Yeah. But I knew that that was us. Yeah. Yeah, what I try when I mix eggs, what I try to do is on the side, I always put a little uh, post it, a note where I put the date, I put the eggs and which eggs and where I put them, or I mark certain and not the others. I try to keep a track on the side of the date, and then I calculate the hatch date, and then I back it up by three days to know when is the lockdown, when I, I need to remove uh, the rails and it stops turning. So I, I know it's automated here, but we've had some cuts, like Christy cuts and so on. So I always try to have a written backup on the side so that mm -hmm. I know when to, uh, there's, we're expecting them to hatch. Especially if I mix uh, different dates, different kind of eggs in there. Because you know, the chickens is three weeks, it's 21 days, but the turkeys and the ducks is one week more. Mm -hmm. And the quails is three days less. Mm -hmm. So if you start mixing, you need to keep up on the side. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've heard uh, you were mentioning about the styrofoam uh, yeah. incubators oh. and I, I've read reviews on them and they have not been good. Mm. So I'm glad that you bring that point up because I like the clear view as meaning that you can see inside as well, because yeah. you want to know what's going on. Uh, I agree. The thing is um, on that one, it's, it's great for chicken, but when I start having turkeys, if it's full and they all hatch, it's getting crazy in there. <laughs> and I cannot keep them too long because usually I like to uh, keep them 24 hours, you know, after hatching, time for them to dry. And with the turkeys and the ducks, if there are too many, I need to take them out. So what, what I actually do, usually I have a, a little giant, one of the foam incubator on the side, and I transfer some of the babies in there 
because it's actually a bit more roomy. It's for the eggs. Um, it's not the same shape. It's a bit taller, so they've got more room. So I try to transfer some um, just to, for them to have some room in there. That's the nice. only limit. It's the larger birds. It can get uh, pretty busy. Yeah. And then move them into the brooder. And then we move them to the brooder. Yeah. And then they go to the to the forever home. To the and forever then, home. Yes. And then another forever home. Yes, it's step by step. <laughs> <laughs> They graduate from one pen to that to another. <laughs> That's right. They do. They do. And you were talking turkeys earlier. I tell you, the turkeys, there is nothing like them with their big eyes. And they're just so curious. They're just adorable. They're adorable. Totally. I but, felt in love my first hatch of the turkeys. <gasps> so, yeah. You yeah. want to hatch more. Yeah, but we don't have any more eggs this year. What? I'm afraid we're done. Yeah. But one turkey keeps following me almost everywhere I go. She wants to come in the greenhouse. The garden, the yeah, coop. yeah, they follow us everywhere. We, they're protecting us, protecting. They're our pets. Um, that's the thing when you hatch the birds, and you're the first person they see and they hear. So at the end, I'm uh, when I go to the farm, I'm a bit mama chicken or mama turkeys, <laughs> and they know the girls too, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We have the five turkeys we hatch, and they come we're running the, over to me. We're the chicks. <laughs> So, I mean, in terms of otherwise, um, difference between the eggs um, and um, the big question on whether you wash or you don't wash. Uh, and I know there's a lot of controversy here on washing or not washing. Um, I don't know. I, I heard both, both sides here. Uh, and to be honest, for me, if the eggs are clean, I don't wash them. If they're dirty, I do because I don't want to put poop and dirty eggs in the incubator mm -hmm. so and i try not to rub too hard and so on but if we've got a lot of dirt or poop i just remove it mm -hmm. or if i have because we got quite a lot of eggs i try to only take the clean ones when i have the choice <laughs> i don't know what you do on that lisa what's your take on the washing and not washing yeah but i i take the clean ones you take the clean ones i don't wash them i take the clean wash. ones and i put them in there um you know, and if, if it's something that I can dry rub, yeah, because you can use like a little bit of a nail file mm. to get some residue off, that's yeah. the stuff that I would do. Yeah, but that's what for me, I would say the bigger eggs, because for instance, the quails I don't touch. I have tried and they're just so fragile, they break. So okay. on these ones, I only take the clean ones, as you say, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we have a lot. But yeah, we've had some turkeys when you know, especially at the beginning of the season the first eggs we're so excited and we want to hatch them but sometimes it's been raining and it's muddy and uh, yeah so on that one uh, i've washed a few uh, but when i say wash it's just clear water and trying to get it out uh, i don't use soap i don't use anything else yeah yeah i uh, use i use very i don't use usually use water i'll just try to rub it with a paper yeah, towel dry. or something <laughs> But that's a good, actually, when we say wet or dry, it's also, there's also a big theory on whether you should hatch. Uh, and I've seen some channels actually dry hatch eggs. Uh, hmm. I think it was Paragon Rich Ranch. Uh, she used to do it uh, completely dry and it worked good. So I haven't tried myself. I followed the instructions, you know. Right. Being in the, on the Gulf Coast in Texas, it's wet anyway. We It's very humid. So I don't need to put too much water during the incubation period, I usually forget and I just leave it as is. It's already 35%, uh -huh. I think, naturally in the house. Mm -hmm. But the last three days, I really push it to be above 60. So on that one, I do add the water for the lockdown period. Mm -hmm. I haven't done the dry hatch. I have not done the dry myself. The um, Do you find that the humidity... I can't remember the name of it, but I know it's a humidity gauge that's built in on the humidifier on, on the incubators. They say a lot of them are not accurate. Oh, I think the my Nutrite here is pretty good. As soon as I add water, it goes up. There's two, actually, there's two openings here on the on the side. The first one is only for. I mean, before the lockdown, so you just put water in there. And during the lockdown, you add in the second one so that it's really watered everywhere. And nice. you, can, you can see the, 
the, the humidity percentage here go up pretty quick when I start uh, using the second uh, slot. Right. So no, I think this one works. This one is reliable. Good. The foam, the foam one, the little giant, you can't tell. Yeah, it's it's always for me. It's always at forty nine percent, whether I add water or not. I think it's not working on that one. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, I noticed for, for us when we, do, I think one of the things that uh, we struggle with is when we're doing it early in the season, um, it's very dry in the house and the temperature is not warm enough. So we have to change the setting on it um, because we're still having heat running in May. Yeah. And then uh, it, it dries up the whole house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very different uh, here. Uh, yeah. It's humid nonstop. So. Right. But even with that humidity, because I I've had quite a few, you know, eggs that uh, they start popping and you can see the beak and then maybe it takes a day or two days for them to get out. If it's not humid, what we've had in the past um, is there's a skin inside the egg and it just completely it, it glues onto their feathers and so on. And in some cases they can die because they cannot get out. Mm -hmm. So having it humid really helps in my, from my perspective here, my opinion, from what Absolutely. I've seen, I think it's the right thing to do. Absolutely. That's, I think, the whole reason why they have you raise the, the humidity, you know, yeah, in the last three days of the hatching on lockdown because they want to make sure that it's humid enough. And I know that there's a thing where they talk about one of the things that I learned about was uh, hot spots in the incubator. You can have hot spots in your incubator. And the problem that you have is you can have eye issues. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that I learned was uh, not to put some of the eggs right underneath the um like the, the motor uh -huh. yeah the motor yeah yeah because it's too much of a right. hot spot but that's what it's called a hygrometer mm -hmm. yeah a hygrometer yeah yeah but yeah i keep it humid and um <clears throat> for i mean it depends on the breed also and on the on the kind of um, eggs you have some of them hatch really quick especially the game birds mm -hmm. usually we've got some i am samanis um, even the breezes they're pretty good we have um, but others they can uh, they can take a while so it's uh yeah humidity helps and uh, secures the hatch here <laughs> but it's <laughs> happened that i i helped some uh, like mommy chicken you know i have some out when mm -hmm. I see it takes too long, it's open um, and they keep like quick, 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 and they cannot, after 24 hours, I try to help them. Gotcha. Especially the chickens. The chickens I helped. Um, every time I've done, I've tried helping a turkey, it did not work. So I gave up on the turkeys. I think they're, if they don't get out, they're just not ready. Because <laughs> I've, I I've agree helped with a few. That. And I, I mean, they've been, they were like waiting for a day. I thought, well, maybe she's stuck or something. And then when I started helping, it was all bloody inside. So it just wasn't a good turkey or was not ready or, and I didn't like it because at the end I killed it pretty much. So mm -hmm. it, um, or maybe it wasn't meant to be. I don't know. <clears throat> well, Monica Bland will tell you that turkeys uh, do everything they can to die as they come into this oh. world. <laughs> <laughs> and I agree. I've had that problem myself. It just, it feels like uh, we've, you know, I've had tons of chicks, never had an issue yeah. uh, when it comes to laying chickens. Um, but when it comes to the turkeys, they're a whole other ball game. <laughs> they're pretty fragile when they're young. Mm -hmm. I, I they agree. Are. They're very, uh, so I let them be the turkeys. They come out or they don't, but uh, I don't touch anymore. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> the chickens, I still do. I help. Uh, I recently uh, got a, a few breezes out. And uh, initially, one of them had been, I hadn't seen it was trying to hatch. And it had been 48 hours. And when I discovered it, I was like, oh, my, Ooh, the humidity started going down and so on. So I actually helped it. And initially, I thought it's never going to make it. And it did. I was very happy. <laughs> so that's Good. what I rescued and saved. So, but yeah, yeah. It, it depends. The ones I really do not touch mm -hmm. are the quails. On that one, they're too small. Uh, and my first hatch, I was so excited with the quails. I did a mistake. What you should never do is I started opening all the time to check how they were doing. 
and you should not open with the quails. I think you've got cold air coming in and and then I, I had a very low hatch rate and some that started never made it out and um, it was my fault. I never did it again. Now the quails, I let them be. I keep it closed and I wait. Even if it's two days, I wait for everybody to hatch. Mm -hmm. I try not to touch the incubator. I don't open it. Yeah. I don't help. And after two days, I'll take them out because at the end, it's uh, they need water and they need to go to the brooder. But I try to let them be. That's what I do too. That's what I do because it's just, it's so hard because, you know, your instinct is to go in there and try and help them. But, yeah. you know, really that's whole, all a part of the natural process, you know, is whether they make it or not. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think the cold air, um, they're just so small and so fragile. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, not a good thing. And, and so I yeah. think the easiest are probably the chickens here because the chickens, they're, <laughs> I help, they come out and it works. So, yeah. <laughs> and that that's something to think about too, because you're in a, in a, a hot climate. So you're probably in air conditioning. I, yes, we do. So yeah. you have that cool air, whereas I don't, I don't have right. air conditioning. So that makes a difference too. So it's like all these yeah. factors play a role in stuff. You're right. You're right. You have to think of all the external factors around your incubator, the light, the AC, the heat, uh, the cat, uh, <laughs> always on the side very interested what's going on in that incubator can i sneak in you know <laughs> and and take a so, bite of the delicious meat yes how do you how do you find um how do you find the uh let's see how do you find the balance or you know with all the different needs of the different eggs like you have quail you have duck you have turkeys you have chickens and you know they're different hatch rates different temperatures how do you manage all of that um well i have a few incubators so i try to um, put them in different incubators like right now i have one that is just quails um and the other two are just uh, my breezy chickens pretty much chickens but i really try to the only ones i mixed are the ducks and the turkeys because okay. they are big eggs they take 28 days uh I've mixed them, but usually I try to keep it uh, separate here as gotcha. much as possible. Gotcha. So but, yeah, you need incubators. That's the thing. We have four of these uh, transparent uh, incubators. So it allows us to do different breeds. Okay. Because I've, I've seen people where they just throw everything in one incubator. And I just yeah, kind of wondered I've how mixed, that. But yeah. I, I don't do yeah I don't change the temperature on that one I do not I just leave it at the ninety nine point five for all the eggs. Gotcha. I I keep the same temperature. Maybe I should not. I don't know. Well, if it's, it's working for you, so it's worked so far. But you have to keep up on the hatch dates. That's the thing when you mix eggs. Um, and when they hatch all together, I, I would be careful with the quails because they are much smaller. And it's easy, you know, if they're with ducks or bigger chickens, I mean, they, they can just get crushed in, inside a small space like that incubator. Mm. The quail are mixed, tiny. Yeah, they're very tiny, but they're very fast. That's the thing, tiny, but they run like crazy. And that's actually usually when uh, I transfer them from the incubator to the brooder, I never do it alone. Because as soon as you open that incubator, they run out like... <laughs> I want free, you know, <laughs> I need to, I get my girls to put their hands around because they fall on the floor. They fall everywhere. I mean, it's just insane. You need to grab these little things. And even so, we might just have 20s there. They, they are much faster than we can be. So <laughs> <laughs> we need to find shelter before these new ones grab me. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good. <laughs> So what kind of tips and tricks would you suggest to folks who are getting into hatching eggs? So I, I would say one of them is if you have the ability to have separate incubators for different eggs or different yeah. having one breed, so to speak, whether it's chicks or if it's uh, ducks or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, at least two incubators, I would say, because the turkeys and the ducks, it's a full month and it's kind of long when you wait. You know, during that time, if you only have one incubator, you can do anything else. 
Right. So the quails are much faster in two weeks, uh, two and a half. Uh, they are it's done. So you can rotate a lot better. But yeah, if I would say having two incubators at least helps you rotate better and separate uh, the breeds. Okay. Yeah, and uh, making sure you've got a, a brooder set on the side as well for when they're ready. Um, important. So as I said myself, sometimes when it gets too crowded, I use another incubator before even transferring to the brooder. Gotcha. gotcha. But we mix in the brooder. Right now at the at the farm, we have a breezy chicken with, with quails in the brooder. I had two incubators that hatched. Uh, I had a few quails and they hatched. And uh, so we are mixing in the brooder. We are mixing them and they're doing OK. I mean, they're just all too small. And uh, the quails are so much faster than the chickens. <laughs> so you just need to be careful with the quails with the water. You don't want them to drown. You know, when uh, when you put the, the water thing, um, I mean, for the chickens, it's easy. They put their beak. But the quails, sometimes they just go all in. And you want to make sure they can get out, maybe put some little rocks Mm -hmm. in the water so that they don't drown. I never had the case, but I heard it has happened. We have uh, ring, uh, ring neck pheasants and I've never had to put rocks in our water, but I did when it came to um, the pheasants because they were tiny. I couldn't believe how small they were. Yeah. They're beautiful oh, now, but boy, they were tiny. Yeah, that's a breed we don't have. Huh? We don't have pheasants. <laughs> yeah, they're beautiful. <laughs> they are beautiful. They are beautiful. We ended up having quite a lot of males because we had 12 pheasants we ended up with that made it through because they're pretty fragile when it starts at the beginning. We didn't hatch them, but um, they're really tiny. And there's a lot of differences between pheasants and chickens and all that. Like you're not supposed to have shavings for them. Um, oh. Yeah, I got the brooder already put shavings in it. And then it was like, we ended up putting a blanket in there because what will happen is, is they'll eat all the shavings and they will be full and they will not eat Ooh. at all. Yeah. And they starve to death. Mm -hmm. So no, we wow. haven't harvested them yet, Carla. We are, they are just about 16 weeks, I think today. And we're just letting some of them fully mature before we do it because we're probably gonna do the turkeys at the same time, <clears throat> excuse me. But yeah, the pheasants are small. And so you have to put the rocks in the water uh, as well to help out. What other kind of tips do you think would be helpful? Cause you've been doing this for two years pretty steadily. Yeah. Um... I don't know. It's, it's it's not that hard at the end, you know. Once mm -hmm. you've got the right incubator, um, then it's all going to depend on... Uh... <laughs> Good question, Rich. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Rich came in late, so he probably didn't hear about the styrofoam uh, one. Yeah, I would avoid... Uh, I put it away, but um, yeah, I started with the little giant, uh, the styrofoam, and um, not a good hatch rate. I had a burn... Um, wire burning in there melting the foam it was just not reliable so that's my uh to go right now the nutri uh, 360 from harris farm that uh, i like but yours seem just as good uh the and lisa it's uh, the same kind of incubator it's yeah. just less eggs but inside it's only 22 but when you get 80 percent hatch rate uh it's uh much better. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, and that's the key. I mean, I, I think sometimes it, it pays to spend them a little bit more money on something because you're yeah. investing in it. And then you're able to at least see what's going on in there if you have to make an adjustment. Because I can tell you, I had one egg that turned a little bit the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I quick went in there and fixed it. Hey, Matt Aker. Um, and I was able to quick and, you know, fix it. And it's, to me, it's quick because you already know what you have to do when you go in there. Right. I had a quail, uh, actually I removed the quail egg. I just removed right there because it cracked. Right. So when I saw it crack, I just took it out and that was it. Um, gee, something that happened a few times, um, I had it with chicken, with turkey, and I, I almost avoided the ducks. I don't know if you had it. It's the, I had eggs explode. In the incubator wow. and that's the most nasty smell you can you can get it's all like i cannot even explain it's brown it. yeah yeah exactly it's um 
I don't know, the egg is not good. What I don't, but I've had it a few times. It's uh, not a pleasant experience. <laughs> yeah, I, I read about that because someone I know was talking about that on one of their social media posts, and they were saying that they happened to look at the incubator and saw that the egg was oozing brown goo for lack of a better term. And it was a good thing they found it because they realized that, um, you know, it was going to explode. Yeah. And did yeah. you lose, yeah, you I, lost the whole batch of, of eggs in the incubator no, then? No, no, I just, uh, I cleaned it. I removed all the eggs. I placed in another one and then I cleaned. No, gotcha. I did not lose everything. I did not, but it's, it's just, it's very nasty and the smell is very overwhelming when you have to clean the thing. <laughs> yeah. I usually take it outside, uh, fresh air, water hose, <laughs> you know. Bleach. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Initially, I started cleaning these incubators with um, apple cider vinegar. And after, especially having I am Samanis, they're very dark, you know. I, I Now I'm using bleach. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I switched to bleach. It's much, much cleaner after. Yeah, that's one thing I've noticed too, because I was hesitant to use bleach, but I ended up just mixing it with water. And, and you yes. know, in between my uses, there's enough time for it to air out and stuff like that. That's what, yeah, and I rinse it very well, but at least it's very clean because the apple cider is okay if it's not too dirty. But when you've got 20 birds hatching in there, staying there for 24 hours, oof, yes, <laughs> bleach is the, the way to go. <laughs> Exactly. And quite a bit. You have to scrub. <laughs> absolutely. Good night, Doug, and Amer Appalachian American. Um, yeah, absolutely. So lots of good tips. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing about, you know, um, watch out for the brown goo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you can get the egg out, get it out. Um, I don't know, thinking of the mistakes I did. Um, you always learn from the mistake. I think my first hatch, I wasn't too good with the dates. I didn't keep up well. Um I did not remove, uh, the first mistake was not removing the, the egg turner. So they still hatch, yeah? the good uh, eggs, they still hatch, even if it continues turning. Uh, but it's dangerous. They can uh, have their legs, uh, you know, get under and so on. So I hopefully, I realized it very quick when they started hatching that there was an issue. So I took it out. That was my first hatch. I wasn't too sure what I was doing. So I did all the mistakes possible on that one. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess it's uh, when you're a beginner, you learn. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, do you, do you feel that there, someone had asked earlier on, do you feel that if there is a, a benefit to like, say your hatch rate and survival rate versus buying chicks? That's a good question versus buying chicks. Um, well, I mean, You've got a cost uh, thing here because, I mean, when you buy, um, unless unless you have a local hat, but well, first, I mean, you, you need a local hatchery if you buy for me because I've, I've, I've purchased eggs in the, I mean, chicks in the past uh, from, uh, which, which hatchery is in uh, Iowa? It's one of the big, what, McMurray hatchery. Yeah, um, I lost I lost chicks. I mean, they take two days to come here. They travel through Minneapolis, Minneapolis, uh, Texas. I mean, it's a super long uh, trip for chicks. Um, you might order 30 and at the end only 20 make it. Um, it's not cheap in terms of price. Uh, some uh, hatchery um, charge you shipping fees. Others include the fees within the price of the bird. So at the end, you end up paying at least $5 per chick, depending on the breed. It can go much higher if you want some fancy breeds. So it's mm -hmm. it's not cheap. I would say if you have already the breed and they, they lay eggs, they're fertilized, I would just hatch what you have. Unless mm -hmm. you want to start a new breed. And in such case, you have to buy outside for sure. But if you buy outside, I would try to buy not far away. I agree. I, and I know for us here, I mean, for a while I had trouble getting packages. I couldn't imagine getting chicks in the mail and I'm in a small town. This should not be rocket science. Um, yeah, um, yeah. We, we're lucky here. We've got a hatchery. Um, I think driving is two and a half hours away. So pretty much they, they sh ship the chicks at four o'clock on 
Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon, and we have them at the post office the next morning at seven. So it's gotcha. just overnight. They're in a truck, and I've, I've almost never lost any from that hatchery. And I usually what I do is I wait for the special deals. Because yep. very often they have special deals. Instead of buying the chicks for five dollars, it goes down to two. Yeah. And they actually had deals. I was very surprised. They had some in uh, May and June this year on some uh, Buff of Tington, Easter Egger. I mean, some good uh, Australops and so on. Usually the deal some motor was October, November, you know, when people don't want to buy chicks uh, because it's getting cold. Mm -hmm. But this year they had some, uh, and I, we actually bought, bought some Buff of Tington and Bentham uh, in May, June, just because for $2, we said, okay, let's just do it here, you know? Yep. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. I know for us, the one time, um, well, not the one time, but we used we get our chicks usually from our uh, local feed store, which is an hour away. And mm -hmm. so what happens is is they mail order them to him, and then he gives me a twenty four hour guarantee. So he brings them in, gets them under the heat and all mm -hmm. that he deals with a bigger post office and they know him mm -hmm. and he's getting tons of boxes. Yeah. So they call him right away. He gets them, but we ordered our Cornish cross and we had over 30. And this was last year. The one day that it was freezing, <laughs> they came in and we lost 10. Uh, that's just bad luck. It just, yeah. And so yeah. I, we, this year we were concerned with all the things going on with birds in general. Yeah. Um, and when Ryan and I saw, you know, the birds in a big box store and they're cheaper there. Yeah. In addition. Yeah. And you, you know what? They just want to give you more birds to take home anyway. <laughs> they just kept throwing them in when we had a couple of pheasants die and we went back to get more. They threw in like two or three. Oh, good. So it makes, you know, makes some sense sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. But I would really hatch your eggs once you have your, uh, your chickens, the lay, just hatch what you have. I mean, if you're happy with the breed. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just throw, I want to say hello to everybody coming in. I may have missed a few people, um, but I just wanted to, if any, anybody has any questions for Anne? Now's a good time to ask. And I think I got most of the questions that were coming up in the chat. But if anybody has any questions for Anne, that would be great. Hey, our new land. Hey, Annie's Kitchen and Urban Homestead, Charlene Heal. Hey, Ricky Ventures. Hey, Ariella Viking Venture and Victuals. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Joy Blessed Life, welcome in. But yeah, if anybody has has any um, questions for Anne, she's given us a lot of information tonight, which has been really helpful. Um, we talked about watching out for exploding eggs, uh, watching, keeping track of hatching dates, um, using different incubators if you're able to, to make sure that you're treating each breed, so to speak, differently. Uh, let's see, and so much more, but I see some questions are coming in here. Yeah, I, I see <clears throat> Carla living a rogue life. Uh, she uses another hatchery than me. I'm interested. I took notes, Carla, the sea breeze. Uh, and uh, okay, local hatchery, because I use uh, ideal poultry myself um, in central Texas, which is another one. Uh, what was the name Carla put out there? I think she's, oh, it's moving too Who fast. <laughs> Is it Hoover's? It was, no, I thought she thought she said Sea Breeze. I don't know. Well, that's her chickens. I don't know. I know we get ours from uh, Hoover's. That's a big one. They're in yeah. Iowa. Yeah. All right. Well, we got a bunch of questions coming in for you. So the one, first Ooh. one is on the screen. And Rich at the Old Swede says, are there good breeds of chickens or bad for hatching? Any tough ones? Well, I can only speak about the ones we have. So there are so many breeds of chickens, <laughs> so many. The more I look, the more I discover new breeds. And uh, so what we have here at the farm, we started with the Buff Optington and the old English Bentons. So we wanted to have some bigger birds and a bit smaller. Uh, and both of them are great breeds. 
Uh, we really like the buff because they lay a good amount of eggs and they're not too big birds. Because at the end, the meat chickens, uh, you need to feed them a lot of feed and harvest them. And that wasn't really our point here. We might harvest when we need it. But right now, we're just keeping our chickens and collecting the eggs. So we're happy with the buff. And they're pretty gentle. I mean, it's not... Uh, they're all around us, um, easy to deal with. Um, the old English bantams, they're smaller birds, but they hatch themselves. Uh, they're quite independent. They go foraging in the forest. Uh, the hens are fine. The roosters can be um, a bit stupid. Let's put it this way. They're very small <laughs> and they come attacking me like they're going to win. <laughs> so we kick each other and then we at peace, but the roosters can be a bit annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then, so these were our first two breeds. And then I started experimenting and my husband too. So he got into the I am Samanis, which is fine, but I'm not too much into these birds, to be honest, them game birds. Uh, we haven't harvested any, um, young ones. We harvested some old roosters that were very tough, but they were old roosters. So that's going to, they're going to be tough anyway, but I mean, they're okay. Chickens, I would say, I do prefer the buff on that uh, they lay more eggs uh, and they probably have more meat as well and then i went into the wyan dots and here initially is because i saw mb heritage farms they had a very beautiful chicken i said wow i want that chicken too so i ordered some wyan dots from mm -hmm. mcmurray hatchery and they happen not to have the same kind so at the end i got all the kinds of wyan dots now at the farm the, the silver laced the gold and we have the um, blue, red, silver laced, and the blush. So we got, uh, so these ones, um, they are very pretty, but they don't lay that many eggs. They lay very late. The roosters need some time to get oriented sometimes on how to do their things. Yep. And they can be pretty aggressive with the hands. Hmm. So um, these ones, I'm not sure we are going to keep, or if we do, we're just going to keep the most pretty ones. Um, to sell Makes uh, sense. because they are pretty but the gold and the silver the roosters are we got them locked up so they're locked up and that's yeah. it if we need to reproduce we will use them but otherwise they're uh, pulling all the feathers out of all our yeah not uh, not pleasant uh, chickens um and then what else because we've got quite a few breeds i went into the breezes so i just posted a video on the breezy update and it was a very pleasant surprise. Myself, given they're French birds and they're very well known for their meat, I knew kind of what I was getting into a bit. My husband did not. And initially was like, yeah, they're white chickens. Really, you want white chickens? <laughs> uh, we're living on a red mud hill, so they're never white. They're always kind of muddish, you know, with the red dirt. And at the end, he loves them. It was a very pleasant surprise because they're pretty nice chickens uh, the rooster is not too aggressive nice. they are meat chickens but not too big and they lay a good amount of eggs too kind of the buff optington so we're nice. happy and uh, we want to keep them definitely uh, that's a good uh, a good breed yeah we we raised um we happen to get a deal on royal gray broilers um for meat birds i'm not as pleased with them as I was the Cornish Cross and the Rud Rangers. Um, so I don't know that we'll be raising them again. Mm. But meat's meat, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, I de you know, they're just not my preferred. I think we've made that decision already that we won't be raising them again. But again, there was a good deal on them, so we bought them. Yeah. And we said, ah, let's give them a try. But the Bressy is definitely something to want to look into because you can hatch them versus the Cornish Cross where you can't. Yeah, no, they're good. Be fertilized. And they hatch really good, actually. Good. The ones we have, uh, yeah, uh, mo most of the eggs are fertilized and they hatch. So they're good. And uh, my next breed, I'm hoping they're going to make it. Um, I have some French copper marrons, you know, the ones that are supposed to be dark eggs. Yeah. I don't know. I I ordered some from my local um, hatchery. They only had a few hatch dates for these, and they were kind of expensive, and they got attacked by predators. Oh, wow. So I only had a very few that survived. I'm just hoping that uh, they're going to make it. I'm going to have at least one hen and one rooster through the winter. We'll see. And I so don't know. 
That's another good point to bring up because a lot of people, believe it or not, don't realize this is now you keep, say, for example, your Bressies separate from your Morans, Mm -hmm. and that's because you're keeping the breed strong. Whereas for us, um, because we were just looking for laying hens, we have barnyard mixes. Now we're going to keep them separate um, is our plan because we have somebody who's interested in... um, taking them for part of the year. So um, that was our plan to be able to have the laying hens and they're just, they're sweet as can be. But Mm. that's the thing about breed, you know. Yeah, it depends what you want to do. Most of us, of our, I mean, the buffs, the I am Samani, they go and free range all together. But the ones Mm -hmm. we really want to reproduce and uh, have a bigger flog, we keep locked up. Just like our turkeys, our initial male and female, the mom and dad, they are locked up. Yep. That's what I have with mine. We have our three breeding turkeys and then I have the other ones go separate just to yeah. keep the, the bloodline pure. And then um, Carla wants to know, do you put down shelf lining when you take out the turner? No, I don't. I don't. But um, Carla, the one I have here, let, oops, I don't want to... Honestly, here, if uh, I take out the turner, um, um, the eggs are on on this, and it's pretty soft, and I mm. never had issue with chickens, uh, like, falling or messing up with their feet in there. Um, I never had to, but it's a good idea, depending on your incubator and uh, how it is. I don't know. Makes sense. Uh, Country Mama Musings wants to know, what do you do when you have one broody hen take over another broody hen's clutch? <laughs> uh, actually, we had uh, our I am Samani's. Uh, it, it, it was interesting. They were all sitting together. Yes, we've had this issue. Even with the turkeys, we had two turkeys sitting together this year. Um, you can do much. Huh? We let them sit. They, yeah. they hatch, um, I mean, the two of them were sitting on the eggs. They didn't fight. So oh, that's they, good. They, they were, yeah, we, did, we never had a fight. That's the thing. Maybe if they had fought, we would have separated the moms. And, uh, but we, never, we didn't have to. They okay. sat together. When one was going, the other one was sitting. Uh, so, no, it went okay on our side here, both with the turkeys and with the chickens. Awesome. And our new land said, gave you, oops, sorry, gave you a beautiful compliment. Oh, thank you so much. (laughs) And I'm just just catching up with the chat. If I missed you, I'm sorry. Hello, everybody. I'm just going through to look for questions. Hey, Dysfunction Junction Ranch, welcome in, welcome in. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. (laughs) My favorite chicken is fried. (laughs) (laughs) Night, Matt (laughs) Acre. (laughs) <laughs> uh, let's see oh joy bless life AT&T is the worst they are the worst we had them in North Carolina I don't know anything about Starlink well, let's see I just want to go through and make sure Carla said Isa Browns are her favorite breed so far um Drops is sold on the Australorps or Golden yeah. Comets. I heard they're really good, uh, kind of like the buffs. I mean, good layers and good meat. Yeah. Mm. Let's see here. Just want to go through. Oh, Carla, your hands really slow down laying during the heat. Same for us. Same. <laughs> it was just too hot. Yeah. Yeah. They were still laying, but at a lower pace. I finally got to the fried comment. I'm so far behind. I'm just trying to. Uh, Dysfunction Junction Ranch, if your chickens haven't started laying yet, Old Swedes Farm has a video that is really good. I suggest you check them out. Uh, Country Mama Musing says she was the one who asked about the broody hen leaving the other broody. And she said, but she has day old chicks already and she left them and took over the other nest. (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh, they're so finicky. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying to go through here. 
bear with me, folks. I think I finally got down to the bottom. Um, does anybody have any other questions for Ann? I think, you know, I, I know for us, I mean, we, we did the turkeys and that was our goal was to do the, the turkeys and the turkeys were challenging because it's, you know, Rich at Old Swedes asked earlier, you know, hatching versus um, buying them. And I can tell you when we bought our turkey chicks, they were raised with Cornish cross. And then when the Cornish cross were processed, the turkey stayed in that coop. We only lost one. And that was because the Cornish cross suffocated it because they were at the feeder. It was the usual. Um, however, we never had any issues with them at, at all. And when everybody kept saying turkeys are hard, turkeys are hard. I was like, what do you mean? And then when I hatched them, now I know. Uh, Ricky Ventures wants to know, are chickens or quail more fun to raise? Uh, chickens. I, yeah. I'm not too fond of the quails, to be honest. Uh, they grow very, I mean, it, they're good for meat. They grow very fast. In two months, you have a fully full size, fully grown quails. If you want to harvest, they are really, really quick to hatch, to grow, but um, they have a very strong smell. So you want to make sure you, you, take, I mean, you take them away. If you're in a suburban area and so on, uh, uh, they, they, they have strong smell um, and they're harder. I mean, they, they, they fly out. Um, the chickens, they come to me like a mommy chicken. You know, they recognize me. They know my voice. I hatch them. The quails, no, forget it. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're wild birds. It's, That's it's, how the pheasants are. Oh, they are? Um, they, uh, the country mama musings and Monica will tell you uh, like that. That's all they heard from me was the pheasants because... <laughs> It got to the point where I couldn't even do chores down there without Ryan helping me because I would open it up and they were all over the garage. <laughs> but now, yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen pheasant in your free time, look up a video on pheasants in their flight pens. Okay. People walk in there and they're flying all over like crazy. Yeah. And I said, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. I don't want to go down there. But apparently the peepers that we have on them to keep them from fighting. Because if you have a lot of males in one area, they'll fight and they get yeah. cannibalistic. Well, it was just so funny because I walk in there and their comments can be now when they were in the brooder, they were nuts. Hmm. That's interesting breed. Yeah. I've never tried the pheasants, but that sounds interesting. Yeah. But yeah. Ricky, to answer your question, I would not go for the chickens. I would not go for the quails. I would go for the turkeys. They are more fun. I think they're the most fun we've had, the turkeys. And the ducks are nice. I mean, the ducks are actually, uh, if you don't mind the dirt and what they come with, they're pretty nice. I like ducks. There is nothing like a little, little duckling bill oh, and feet. Just, oh, too cute. But then they mess up the brooder and it's got three yes. inches of water in it. <laughs> you're right. You're right. It's just a mess. The, the ducks are a mess, but they are adorable. <laughs> they are. They are. I just saw, I saw Monica's comment in there about peeing around a coop and I was laughing to keep predators away. <laughs> yeah. But predators are an issue. Huh? It's, um, yep. we lost chickens. Uh, make sure the, the coop is really well protected. It's, um, so that's rich at old Swedes. To keep them. Well, <sighs> Have you done that before? No, I, I wish I had this summer uh, with my with my dog. Uh, but usually we let them sit. If they sit and we want we want to have babies, we let them sit. But this summer I had a I have a new breed of ducks, which is I never know how whether it's apple silver yard or civil silver apple yard. But there's mm -hmm. a silver and an apple in the name. Yep. We like them. Uh, we had a male and a female. Um, initially, she got three eggs. So I actually took them and I hatched them here and we got babies. Uh, and then she started laying a lot and sitting on her eggs and it started getting really hot. And I kind of and I was waiting, waiting and uh, they never hatched. I wish I had taken them uh, to put in the incubator on this one because I think it was just too hot. It got to 110. I mean, it was bad this summer here in Texas. Yeah. 
So that's the thing, Rich. Um, it, it's going to, I would say, it depends here. I would let them sit, but in some cases, I've regretted it, especially if you really want a reliable uh, hatch, you know, you really want the birds, I would just take the eggs. And we did that at the beginning with the IM Samanis because we really wanted to reproduce. Initially, we wanted to try to sell some. We took the eggs and we hatched because at least we know it's that incubator. We're going to have 80, 85% hatch rate. It's going to work. Right. We know what we get. If they sit, you always have uncertainties. The weather, the predators. We had uh, our turkeys as well. Uh, they were sitting and then the eggs were disappearing. So we're like, what's going on? Do they eat the eggs? And no, it was a snake. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's the thing. You never know. When you let them sit, it might work, but... Yeah, so Rich, I know a lot of folks, and I think Alicia at Country Mama Musings just did this, um, but I know a lot of folks that I follow on Instagram have had that issue where there's a broody hen sitting on the eggs, and then she gets up and leaves after one hatches, and they put them in the incubator to finish them off. Um I know that for me, the incubator is much more reliable because number one, I haven't had a broody hen until after we hatched our seven chicks in the incubator. And she really wasn't that invested because she would even be broody and just sit on in the nesting box with nothing under her. <laughs> um, and the other thing is, is like with our turkeys, I mean, our two turkeys hens, sat in the boxes for probably about two months. They didn't hatch anything out. Yeah. I mean, I would go in there and there would be 14 eggs under them. Mm -hmm. The next day I'd go in there or a week later, I'd go in there and there would be three. So it just, they were either eating them or whatever they were doing. Maybe you put the stress in the coop because we did have another male turkey that was causing some issues. But, um, for us, it's just a much more reliable way and it helps us increase our self-sufficiency. And I think that's the same for you too, Anne. Yeah, exactly. We had the same experience with the turkeys and the chickens, but we have some, I mean, for instance, the old English Bentams, they're kind of game birds, wilder breed, and they do hatch. The hens are good at sitting and hatching the birds. We have quite a few broody hens, actually, even the buffs, some of them sit. But yeah, if, as you said, you want something reliable, you take the eggs and you hatch yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I always laugh about people. They say that they don't want, and don't get mad at me, folks. I'm just telling you like it is. Uh, when people are like, I'm not going in the nesting box because that broody hen is mean. And I'm like, I just go in and pick her up. <laughs> and she bites yeah. me. She's not happy. And I pick her up and I take her out of the box and I go, come on. <laughs> yeah, she won't be happy for sure. You're taking her babies. <laughs> right, right. This was the one that was sitting on nothing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but but yeah, right now I, I want to reproduce the breezes. We pick up the eggs. So we don't even let them time to decide whether they want to sit or not. They're young anyway. They might yep. not sit, but we just pick them up. Yeah. Incubator. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Dysfunction Junction said they're new to turkeys and they have a mama and her six babies. What breed do you have? I'm curious what breeds do you have? take those broody hens with no eggs and cool them off. No, I just pulled her out of the box every day for like three days and she got mad at me and walked away. <laughs> um, any last questions for Anne? Cause we're approaching the one hour mark and I want to make sure that she will, uh, is able to answer all the questions. Yes, Ricky, I do feel it will be. Uh, let's see. Cows in general need lots of water. 25 gallons a day. Mm -hmm. I should drink 25 it's... gallons a day. <laughs> That's a lot. Of... <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Let's see here. I just want to go back up. Yeah, Grace and Fire says we don't have a rooster, so I'm always moving my girls to the broody jail, not afraid to pick them up. Yeah, I mean, because that's the thing. You, you have to just, you know, it's not good for them if they're not, you know, doing what they should be doing. You know what I mean? Like if, they, if they're broody and they're on eggs and that's fine, but you have to make sure that they're every day, they're getting some food and water because yes. they'll just, our turkeys look so there. terrible mm -hmm. after that time uh -huh. frame. You're right. But, Thank well, you. Any, any last 
last pointers or anything else? You've done amazing. I appreciate all the information you gave. No, thank you. No, just uh, go for it. That's the my only advice. Try. I mean, you learn from your mistake and uh, try it out. Get a good incubator, something reliable. Put the money in a good one and uh, try it out. Don't be afraid to try turkeys or quails or something other than chickens. Yep. I agree. I agree. And and that's, again, I, I'm going to reinforce that point. Spend the money on a good one. Yeah. Do, like, you know, Anne was talking to me before and said, you know, reviews. Um, I posted on social media at the time and asked people to tell me what incubators they used. Um, a lot of folks said that they used the styrofoam ones were the responses I got. Um, I went and looked online and everybody said, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. So Anne had that experience where, I mean, it could have burned her house down. Thank goodness it did not. Um, but just spend the money on a good one. Don't always look for the absolute cheapest one because you get what you pay for. Yeah. So sometimes it pays to wait for a good deal or get a good coupon or just wait until you're ready then. You know what I mean? I think that is a better option rather than going for the cheapest one. And trust me, I'm all about cheap. But when I want something, I want something that's going to work, too. Yeah, because at the end, you make the money back uh, by the hatch rate you get. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, but it's a good point. You know, when you mentioned the, the fire, the other thing is the, the way you set up the brooder. And initially, I started with the heat lamps. And I switched to the heat plate mm -hmm. very quick just because of that fire hazard. And I feel much safer and better with the heat plate. Um, the chicks are very happy too, uh, but it doesn't get too cold here because the thing uh, in the brooder is, I mean, on, they are happy under the heat plate, they're warm, but they do have to get out to get the food and the water. And if it's freezing outside, it's, so depending on where you live and how you're set up, that's the only thing, but I would really recommend a heat plate as well, just for safety. I could not agree more. Um, we also bought a heat plate this year and it has just given me peace of mind because ours are in the garage. Just like me. Yes, I don't want the house to burn down. <laughs> right, right. Hey, Tom, it on the plant. And so the other thing I will suggest, if you have to have a heat lamp, and I'm usually not a proponent of them, but with the pigs, I had to because mm -hmm. um, we had some nights that were forecasted for 48 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit at night and that was too low for pigs mm -hmm. for the first two weeks because of they're not able to regulate their heat temperature. We invested in a Premier One heat lamp and when I tell you quality for the price, you know those metal ones that have the light that are such garbage? Yeah. Well, the Premier One has a heavy plastic uh, mm -hmm. piece that is screwed onto it. The light is very far back from it the other thing I like is the cord is a lot longer, but it actually screws onto the casing. So it locks on. So I agree. Heating plate for chickens. Absolutely. Because I think it's a much more efficient way of heating them. Mm. Yeah. It's cheaper. Actually. You're right. Uh, less and it's energy. less stress, less yes. stress on them because they're not awake 24 hours a day. But your heat lamp, I heard of it uh, before and only good reviews. So that's something I need to look into. Yeah, I, I was not near as panic stricken as I was with regular heat lamps. Yeah, you know, that one is a bit safer. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 And of course, with the piglets, you can have it up a little higher, but yeah. I still it's worry good. with the heat on yeah. the shavings. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Anne, I just want to thank you so much for being here this evening and for educating all of us. And I want to thank everybody in the chat for being here. And if you have any questions, you could always feel free to put them in the comments. And if I can always reach out to Anne, if I don't know the answer, um, and I'll be happy to get her opinion. No, thank you, Lisa, for having me. Thank you all. You're all very knowledgeable in the topic as well. You're all homesteader. So <laughs> thank you for letting me speak and present. I appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate it. And everybody in the chat is saying thank you so much. And... <laughs> It's great because the, one of the best things about this is the replay is out there. So folks are able to catch it when they're able to. So thank you again and stay tuned, everybody. We will be having 
more episodes similar to this. So stay tuned. And thank you again, Anne. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.